Yeah, brother. Hey, how's it going? Ah, you know, like everyone else, I'm tired of being locked down. I'm frustrated, and I got to, uh, I got to watch my intros with you guys. Last time I told John Law, uh, well, you know, I got a hard time placing my hate in positive places. I think I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself that I could acknowledge I got some hate. <laughs> And it was kind of like my hello, like before we even started anything, and it kind of led the article. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Sorry, Bill. Let me try and call you right back. I got a horrible connection. One second, okay? okay. Right. Hopefully that'll be better. You got me, brother? Bill. I'm with you with our connect. Nothing still? Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. Okay. Um, I felt we'll tell him um, I have terrible cell phone. Oh, okay. It is, my, it is my problem. We live in a depression here. Uh, um, in one of those, you know, those neighborhoods kind of in the middle of nowhere. Okay. And nobody, nobody has good cell phone reception. So we got sent home to work from home. Um, it was like not the best thing for me, but I, uh, you know, battle on just like, like everyone else. <laughs> so, uh, what, what, what do you want? I, I will give you like a, an open mic kind of what. When you hear this kind of, uh, you know, people saying that they, they shouldn't be on your show because they're, uh, you know, condoning um, the things about uh, what, how, how do you respond to that sort of thing? Well, I guess the first thing I want to see is the proof of any of what they're accusing me of. They're calling me of transphobia. Show me. Where have I said anything about trans people? Uh, homosexuals? Minorities? Women? Other than calling people names, which we all do. I mean, the amount of hate that I got from the first article was 45 days worth. You know, I had comments on my... Jim Fannin show page from a girl that I said something to her like, what, you never called somebody a bad name before? She says, mm -hmm. you know what she says to me, Bill? You came out of a cunt. Now, I don't care who you are. That's funny. Like, that is hilarious. Even my mother's not with us any longer. I mean, but that's funny. Like, to see that type of expression and rage from the people that are angry at me for expressing my rage. Uh, this all started because I think it's inappropriate for an elected politician to tweet things that contain the phrase, Jesus fucking Christ. She's an atheist, and I think it shows disrespect for anyone that has any type of religion. That didn't make the last article. You know, um, I called her a dumb fucking cunt. Like, I mean, have you never seen Ricky Gervais? It does, it's not sexual. It's not gender specific. Uh, so when you see in the paper, oh, he called her a cunt. Well, can you at least use the other words? You dumb fucking cunt. Like it's it's an it's a throwaway. It's a t you know like here's the thing, Bill. And this didn't make the last article either. I've been Lori Yip's best friend, supporter, and advocate since the day that they started talking about having a by-election to replace Washuda. I had her on mm -hmm. my radio show many times. I took an mm -hmm. instant like to her. I love that she's powerful, well-spoken. She's creative. But I'm not a lefty anymore, Bill. And mm -hmm. I don't believe the things I used to believe. And I was a good friend of Laura Yip for many years. In fact, we were so tight in, the, in January of 2014. You should see, I've got every text message from her. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, and when you get personal, there's some stuff in there that you wouldn't want getting out when you've got an intimate relationship or a French, uh, not intimate, uh, kind yeah. of intimate. I mean, we shared our personal <laughs> relationship struggles. Mm-hmm. She talked to me about Grant. I talked to her about Monique. I mean, like, we were friends, Bill. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, she said she'd take the high road. I flew off. I did. He, Bill, if you look at, I'm sure you've seen the video. It's a, it's a bit. I'm wound up. I'm just being myself. It's nothing that you or anyone else hasn't said once before about someone else. So here's where it all starts. That's where it starts for me. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I start to see things differently. I'm opposed to uh, late-term abortion. I don't want anything after six months or maybe even three months. I find mm-hmm. it weird that we don't have a law. I never questioned those things when I was 24 and I was a lefty. Mm -hmm. You know, I've changed my view. I give myself a little bit of credit for being programmed for the Greens, for left, for a long time, and seeing Mm -hmm. that, you know what, young women are actually doing better. There's no pay gap for young women now. Up until 33 years old, they're making more money than men are. And then traditionally, they go out of the, the workforce to have children if they don't have them by that age. No one's talking about that. So these false narratives, I just become awake i think you know i didn't know why colin kaepernick was kneeling on the sideline until i looked into it okay yeah we all hate police brutality there's nothing that enrages me like seeing a bully beat up on somebody defenseless or outnumbered that's why i hate antifa so much because they always come in the mob they always take on innocent people you know uh i I forgot where I was going with that. What well, was my uh, well, we, brain yeah, farted? I mean, we, 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 well, we got onto the thing about the bullies, you know, that uh, and you were talking about Kaepernick. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. So and, and, just, just to wrap that up, like, I mean, yeah. I didn't look into Black Lives Matter, but when I look at the FBI stats and I find out that t- in 2018, there was eight or nine unarmed black men that were killed by police, all resisting arrest. And then there was 18 or 19 white people killed unarmed by police. I'm like, oh, so I get it. It's all based on a lie. So I kind of rally against the Marxism, the lefties, the we're oppressed. You know what? Women are not, spe- they're special to me. They give life for crying out loud. Yes, they should be a protected, uh, protected mm-hmm. species. I put more value on women than I do men. That's why I can say whatever I want about a man and nobody comes back on me. I have a loose moment and I don't take any of it back. I had a couple drinks. I'm being Jimmy. That is a snapshot in time. That's my true feelings. What I'm feeling right there when I'm saying, why do you hate Christians so much? We built your fucking society, you dumb fucking cunt. Like, yeah, it's not nice. Yep. You know, yes. uh, but I, I have no hate in my heart. I could you, sit you down know, again. The truth teller, right? the, yeah, I mean, I mean, the, I'm not, I, I'm nothing special that, easier. Yeah, I've just right. got, a, I've just got this attraction to busting false narratives. Everyone thinks these masks work. I think they're poison, and there's data to show that I'm right. You know, there's, you know, the latest study that come out, and I've been talking about asymptomatic spread, about he, reaching herd immunity way back a year ago. And now I'm starting to, things are trickling on. I'm like, see, like these are pretty common sense things when you think about it. This is not an airborne virus. Like there's so many things. Like I'm not walking by you on the street and picking up COVID. Like, come on, man. And we're wearing masks outside. My heart... My heart breaks for people because I'm like, how easy is it to get them to believe that black people are being hunted down indiscriminately by white cops in the States and that you need to wear a mask outside when you're alone? It breaks my heart, Bill. Like, I, I, you know, somebody said to me the other day, why? Okay. I trolled uh, Laura a little bit with my fur. With my fur. That's a troll. That's fun. That's me being provocative and saying, fuck you. You know what? You can say whatever you want about Jordan Peterson, a guy I really respect, somebody that's done a lot for many people. Mm -hmm. Like this man is a brilliant communicator and a deep thinker. And you call him a moron? And you think that's different than me calling you a dumb fucking cunt. (laughs) You know, like, so I'm, (laughs) 
you know, but I'm haunted by it, Bill. Like, people think I don't give a shit. I just, you know, I'm looking to cause trouble and stuff like this. No, the first time, you know, you get hate mail. Well, I'm sure you've, you've probably yeah. experienced some well, level of nothing it. Like, nothing like Grant or you, but yeah. I yeah, think. I mean, you get 45 days yeah. of unrelenting yeah. daily hate messages. It tears you mm-hmm. up. And same with Grant. I have no problem with Grant, other than I don't think he likes me very much anymore. We used to be fine. I offered when I was last time, you know, doing the mayor's debate. Yeah, you know, yeah. I went to shake his hand. He basically spat in it. He wouldn't shake it, and I called him a fucking punk. Yeah. And then he stood yeah. up to me. And then he told my girlfriend, I got angry, and he had to throw me out. I walked out. He slammed the door behind me. I got no problem. Mm-hmm. With it. Like, I'll bury the hatchet with anyone, anytime. Grant LaFleche is no different than me or Laura Yip. Laura Yip was a good friend of mine, man. We, yeah, like, well, I guess, I guess in listening to you, I, I guess the problem or the, the, the disconnect that you can explain for me is that, you know, if, if you don't like the 45 days of, of hate mail, why do something that would... Okay, um, that's exactly that. it. So that's where I was going with that. Somebody asked okay, me sorry, that the other day. <laughs> yeah, no, Go sorry. On. No, I'm, I don't mean to cut you off. Thanks for keeping yeah. me on track. Uh, someone asked me that. I mean, I've got a good, I've got a lot of good people that love me that I can count on to call me on my stuff. They don't always agree with me and they're good community people. Uh, you know, many of them probably. Um, and one of them asked me why I'm like, Oh geez, that's a, that's a good question. So immediately, honestly, what came to me right away is I'm feeling pulled into the federal election. Okay. And I'm feeling like the target is going to be the liberal and the left-leaning ideological possession of women that think that my body, my choice to nine months is something to shout about. Mm-hmm. Right? These are my targets now. Not because I hate Laura Yip. I love Laura Yip. She's a good woman. <laughs> you know? I've told her that many times. I've got the text to prove it. I say that to a lot of my friends, male and female. There's nobody mm-hmm. says I love you more than me. I'll probably tell you on the way off this call, love you, brother, because I do. I love people. So I feel like it's in the back of my head. Okay, maybe maybe I'm warming up. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I'm you know, maybe I want to make some noise. I don't know. But here's the thing. I was, pill, uh, I was dragged for 45 days. I was fired from my brokerage, deplatformed. By Rob Gill that has targeted both my Twitter accounts. They're gone now. I'm back to my Team Niagara, which I had for a real estate account. You know, 10,000 mm-hmm. followers gone. I had a good little account going. It was fun. Yeah. You know, I had mostly MAGA followers, so I had a lot of a lot of support out there that I don't get on Left Wing Facebook so much. Uh, but they've targeted me. You know, I yeah. saw, you know, I'm not deeply religious. I struggle to be a good Christian guy. Uh, I feel like God was giving me the messages all the time, get out of real estate. And then my broker, who is a new broker, he took over my, 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 uh, he bought the brokerage. I don't think he, he was all that thrilled with who I am as a human being. And, uh, you know, he would drag me in for the ridiculous things and make a big deal out of it once in a while. And then, so when this came down, he fired me. So I took that to mean... Maybe God doesn't want you in real estate. This is probably a good time to just listen instead of resist him, right? And so, and I keep getting pulled to this. Bill, I could have conversations like this, guys with you, all day, every day, and love it. Because I think somebody might be listening and go, oh, that's not who I thought Jimmy Fannin was. Like, Jimmy Fannin's got a heart. He cares for people. He looks at Bill Sawchuck and sees, like, a baby, <laughs> you know, like a, like what you what you're like when you're a child, like still innocent and stuff. You're like, anyway, I'm blathering right yeah. now. Sorry. No, no. Well, I mean, that's what you. That's what you uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you, interview wise too, was I went back and looked at the last deal, buddy. Um, your 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 interview. Well, I listened to it or whatever the podcast mm-hmm. deal, and you know, it, like it's like I mean that was kind. of kind of like an uplifting that was him talking about cancer and things and you didn't seem to pull him into I, I don't get offended but your shtick like you've got like a, a shtick right that you do um I mean, we don't have to call it a shtick or whatever well I've got some passionate topics different. right like these false yeah. narratives busting these these up yeah but it's very different than than the the rant or whatever you want to sure. call that I was calling it but sorry you cut out there oh sorry 
It was very different than what? It was very different than like like some of your other stuff. When I when I call it, when you go on a rant, right? It was a uh, you know it was a very kind of straight up interview. Uh, it was not what people would expect from you know if they didn't ever take the time to listen from a Jim and Pocket. Am I right about that or? Uh, I think my I got a lot of respect for the people that I interviewed. Jim Diodati is no different than anyone else, and I think I give them the time of day. And I'm not, I'm not looking for conflict. I find myself very supportive. So it's, right, right, yeah. You know, it's and it, if you look at my last interview with Laura, yep, we disagreed on everything and sat here for an hour and a half discussing yeah. it. Now I don't think we got anywhere as far as, you know, can we just agree that we shouldn't kill babies after six months is that okay is that so radical like we didn't really get anywhere and she still claims that women are victims they're not i love mm-hmm. women they don't need to yes they need protection and and all the things that men provide for them and then some mm-hmm. um but they're not victims we don't need to protect them. we don't need to give them special mm-hmm. help that's it's sexist like you know i can't i can't yeah. even hold a door for a woman now she's like i can get up myself i'm like well you, you know what you can go fuck yourself like i'm not going to say that but that's what i think you know yeah, like yeah. i get i get the car door i got it for laura yep i walked her back out of the car to her door you know i'm not uh, looking for a kiss i'm a, I'm a gentleman i get the door right. for my niece for my mother where you know the car door ever like yeah. And so this idea that I'm just full of hate is ridiculous. I'm full of love. I'm angry. Yeah, I'm pissed off. Mm-hmm. I, I I have my, you know, you want to call it a shtick. I have put my passions and I have my, my hit list as far as topics go. I don't think I don't think girls can become boys. And I think if you help a prepubescent child transition, you're it, can we let them reach puberty by themselves for crying? They can't get a tattoo, but they can change their sex. Give me a break. Like, mm-hmm. there's, I've got some, and, you know, it it bleeds over sometimes because my conversations right. sometimes wander, and if I've got a loose guest, sometimes the next thing, wow. like somebody said to me the other day, hey, I heard you, heard you talking to Mike, Mike Farkas the other day, the photographer. Why the hell would you bring up abortion? I'm like, oh, geez, you're right. Like, how did that get yeah. in there? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> So. But I just, it just, it seems there's two different things that go on, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're doing your show. Um, uh, well, and, yeah. And, and those, and it looked, it looked like it's like it's, like it's, like it's, like it's all over the place. I, I mean, you could call, I mean, someone could call it eclectic, right? It's a, it's a it's collection of, you know, kind of uh, interesting and odd and, uh, you know, on point, on topic with the issues of the day. You know, mm-hmm. you kind of, you and the music stuff, so you've got all kinds of interests, mm-hmm. you know, and you do a good job of communicating it. You know, it just, you seem to get yourself into trouble a lot uh, mm-hmm. for what it, for, for what it is. But I mean, you're good, right? I mean, I, I don't, I think, I, I think, is that, is that a good, what we've been talking about? Is that, it, I'll, I mean, again, I'm going to have to, you know, can't use everything, but I'll, I'll probably use it. But I just, I'm just curious in terms of, not so much what's going on, oh, 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 oh the mining between, yeah so that's me saying basically i explained that already right that's me feeling like the first thing that comes to mind and maybe it's something deeper maybe this is just an it's just a convenient story that i invented but the first thing honestly that comes to me is like hmm i got a federal election i'm going to be going up against these type of people uh it, it like you know and then in the back of my mind, I'm going, oh, so I can't call you a dumb fucking cunt, but you can call Jordan Peterson a moron. You know that moron is more offensive. Like, if you say goof in jail, you're dead. Like, oh, yeah. anybody oh, that oh, knows yeah. oh. anything about code yeah. of bikers or the underground, yeah. goof, oh, yeah. you you do not do goof. Yeah. You know? Then you fight to the death. It's and so the who's death. to say that moron, fool is in, in, in jail too, fool is nasty. Like, you better be ready to fight for your life, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. moron, I find silly because obviously Jordan Peterson is not a moron. He's a clinical psychologist for crying out loud. He's a mm-hmm. brilliant thinker. He's written two books. He's he does, you know, two hour lectures on the first verse of Genesis because he wants to discover the psychological significance of the Bible verses. You know, and he, and he yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like it's unbelievable. Like he talks yeah. about these old stories, right? And I'm tired of women saying, we don't need men. We can bring up our children alone. Here's, Bill, for me, the number one problem today in the world, in North America, let's say, 
fatherlessness. Mm -hmm. Men are out of the family. In yeah. the States, in the 60s, they brought in this welfare thing that mm -hmm. you could get money, but you couldn't have a man in the house. And our kids are paying for it dearly. And don't even get me started on the millennials that think everything should be free. And, you know, the government should provide for them. That's a whole, or not the millennial, I don't know, whatever generation that is. But we, fatherless is, fatherlessness is, a, you know, it's not racist or bigoted to say that the traditional family with man and wife is the best family setup. It's the most successful for children. I care about mm -hmm. children deeply, yeah. deeply. Yeah. And I think they're getting ripped off and it, mm -hmm. it makes my heart hurt. And so when I come out, I come out against these people that want to murder them, literally. <laughs> and they think that's okay. And then, Bill, they're so hypocritical. They go down to Marine Land to protest caged animals. <laughs> like, and they don't see their, their own hypocrisy kills me because the people that are pro-choice are also anti animal captivity it just blows my mind so you know and then so i get frustrated i'm passionate and then the comedy comes right like in, sure. inevitably i am a, i'm hilarious i don't care if you find me funny but i'm pretty funny <laughs> just just yeah. the way i am i'm a funny guy you know i don't do stand up but i'm i have i've always been kind of funny yeah. and yeah. so then the then the then the Dirty language comes out, and I'm loose, and I have a couple drinks, and yep. I'm streaming, and I'm like, well, well whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, you get on a roll. <laughs> yeah, so there, you're right. There's a distinction between my interviews, which are very... Well, some are, yeah, some are very straight, even passionate, yeah, yeah. and 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 yeah, with the beer, and, yeah. and then yeah, once in a good. while, I sit around with a buddy of mine, and we dust off well i haven't done this in a long time we dust off a bottle and smoke a bunch of giants and play music you know so. <laughs> not like for the strong so much but because i got your uh and, and you're, you're obviously a curiosity you're, you're interesting um why like are you done with politics now like that kind of running for office you have game like you are good like you know, you know, you did well, you do really good there. Um, you know, you know issues, you come across, you command, you take command, you know, of an audience or, you know, or, uh, you know, a Q&A session yeah. or whatever you want to call it. I enjoy it. But, but, but like, it's, like, I just, I wonder about the choice of the party. Yet. I'm like, it was all going to succeed that, with that. You have to kind of be in one, you know, uh, one of those platforms to you and it was almost like you handicapped yourself in some ways uh, and I'm not judging or anything I'm just saying from from a, from a you know as, from a perspective of someone on the outside I I, I can get why he didn't go for more of a I don't know to actually but maybe that wasn't the point or you could explain to me okay yeah uh, you I'm, I'm all ears yeah you know what I'm talking you're really cutting, uh, cutting up. Oh, so I, I'm no. And let me reiterate what I think you said to me. Okay, you, yeah. you followed me through the Green Party campaign. I've got some talent on stage. I know the issues well, but I tend to You're be. A candidate. Yeah, I. But I tend to get in the mud with the humor and the name calling sometimes, and maybe that overshadows my message. And why don't I take the high road more? Is that the? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's not a bad. Not a bad. Uh, yeah, I would say that to that that I'm being exactly who I am up there. And I'm that guy with you in this interview. I'm the guy on stage. Right. You know, there was a little, when I was on 610, I did notice a little bit of uh, separation of the stage versus the real man. For instance, I often make this comparison. My Twitter account is not human. I'm not sure if you know that, but there's no blood or heart or soul in my Twitter account. All my social media accounts. Do you think that I go around talking like I tweet? Like it is marketing, it's branding, it's provocative, it, it starts conversations, it trolls people, it creates hate, whatever. I experience it when other people tweet what they think is truth and I look at it and I feel rage. That's hate. That's, I, I, I know what it feels like. And now other people do because of Donald Trump. They know what 
hate really feels like. I, you know, I'm a lefty. And I was so surprised that I was starting to be entertained by Trump. And then I think he handed the China virus right. And listen to me, China virus. I think he handled the trade deal with China right. I like what he did with Korea. I like what he did with Iran. I like what he did with, like, the border wall. I love, like, look at the border now. I, I, he got this, this, is a, this vaccine was a miracle because of the regulations he cut. And so I found myself objectively going, what the hell's with this guy? Who am I? So for the last five years, you know, I ran in 2016 as my last Green Party. I was, you know, I I know the platform. I know the issues. I can still uh, steel man those arguments. Uh, But I'm just not there anymore. I'm for strong borders. I don't think more gun laws are making safer communities. I think that there's a huge pedophilia and sex trafficking uh, thing that we don't talk about. You know, you've got Hollywood. You've got opioids that are killing Chinese fentanyl that are killing our youth. We have fatherless children. Like, there's other things going on. We don't need to be caught up with with gender pay gap and Black Lives Matter. Are you kidding me? That's the least of our worries. White supremacy is the problem? Oh, my gosh. Do you know what the... (laughs) You know, you know, here's another, you know, we talk about stats, right? 13% of the population in the States is black. I'm not a racist guy, but facts are facts. Seven and a half, if you, if half of those, seven and a half percent of those people are are males. And then if you take the crime rate, 50% plus, sometimes 60% of the crimes are committed by black men, 18 to 35 or something. Mm Mm-hmm. That's that, the, now. If you take that, that's three percent of the population. Economically the, oppressed, you're more likely to. Uh, well, end up. dude, I don't care what you are. Uh, We're like, that. let's get some fathers in the house. But three and a half percent of the population committing sixty percent of the pr- crime. You get, you get what's going on. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, well, nobody wants to talk about. Like, well, yeah, we've got a black crime problem with men. You know, it's not women. <laughs> Yeah, although, and St. Catherine's, like, I did court. It's the same 3% of people, you know, like, who come in court, like, over and over again. Not for murder, but for, you know, for, for just, you know, the crimes that, well, you in jail, but maybe not even in prison. But it's, you know, like, again, it's, it's, it's that, that criminalism, it, it, racially, it's a group of people. Uh, well, their faces show up all the time there. You know, you got a bunch of people with like a hundred convictions, and, and they come, they show up. They're the ones. Yeah, there's, um, there's, there's so, there's so many issues we could get into, but I guess I'm, yeah. I'm tired of Justin Trudeau, and uh, <laughs> Joe Biden telling us that every system is, no, every institution in our great land here is systemically racist top to bottom. So systemic is power. Words are powerful, right? Systemic means all, all throughout the body. You know, when, mm-hmm. when a guy that writes for your paper that is native, uh, what's his name, Doc Stetter? Yeah, uh, Doc Stetter, yeah, and, now, and, now, his, and his, his, his partner, Sean. Now, why will no one call that man a racist for ACAB? All cops are not bastards. All white mm-hmm. people are not racist. That is flat-out racism when you say... If you're white, you're inherently racist because the systems are. And Lori Yip standing up before regional council and saying, we are all racist, even if we're anti-racist, by the fact that we grew up in a racist system. Bullshit. That is racist. And if I called... And you're going to call it out. Yeah. yeah, damn straight. Well, all cops are not bastards. Blue lives matter. Like, get out of here, man. It's a tough yeah. job being a cop. When... when, when, when when, it, when it, that, that torrent of trolling happens, do you feel bad for her? Or do you, you know, um, it's happened. I'm, s- I'm sorry, one more time. Did sorry, I feel bad when, for when, who? Okay, yes. Or it's like in a, in a um, torrent of trolls. Did, um, what? Do you feel this, bad for that happening? This time around? Yeah, this time around. Or Shit, no, time, Bill, listen. She's bringing this on herself. She's gra- She's grandstanding. She has always said, I'm above this. I will not respond to this guy. You know how you deal with a Jimmy Fannin if you think he's obscene? You ignore him. You don't give him a platform, run a column in the standard with the link to the show and give me a thousand views in 48 hours. You're my biggest salesperson now, Corey, Carrie Porter. Like you're making me money. 
Like, um, I, I, I mean, I, not I, literally. You. Not literally. No, but. I, know, I know what you mean, and I get it. And I, I, I may call you back depending on what else happens. I got to take my son to uh, piano okay. lessons. All right. <laughs> Tell your son I love him. I appreciate you being straight with me. Uh, I, I've never yeah. talked to you before, but I got a long history going back to Calvin Reed, one of my favorite guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people hate me now, Bill. What can I say? Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> I don't know. You seem, to, you seem to be marching through it. So. Yeah. yeah, we will. Uh, I, I will could, we'll have this conversation again, I'm sure. All right, uh, maybe even sooner than, than you realize. Uh, but I got to go because 215 is the music lesson, but uh, I've lost track of time. I'll just so tell I you, seven, go. 7 o'clock tonight, I got a two-hour-plus podcast that will explain just about everything, including the interview with Tom McConnell and Carrie Porter's video from last night. So it breaks at 7 p.m. tonight if oh, you want to watch oh, were it. Were you on with Tom? No, I, oh, no, I, no, her with Tom yeah, I broke it down, it. stopped it, and laughed at her, and called her names all the way through it. It's, it's just, it's just classic Jimmy Fan and all over again. You'll love it. Okay, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Jim. Yeah, all right, brother. Yeah. Peace. Okay. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Well, that's Bill Sajak. What did you think of that little conversation? <laughs> oh boy, look, I don't ever sweat, ever. This is four days now. As soon as I wake up in the morning, this. I mean, coffee doesn't help either. Four days. <laughs> Straight adrenaline. And then yesterday it was an eight-hour migraine or 10-hour, 12-hour migraine. Man, it was nasty. That was Bill Sawchuck. Look at that face. He looks like a little baby. I don't know. I think he sounded like a good guy. I've given these article, these interviews before, and the articles sometimes are not that friendly. All right. I'm not sure who's, if anyone's even going to watch this, but I need to get a shower. <laughs> it's 2-18, Thursday, March 18th, 2021. I love you guys. Oh.